1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern, pregame show 30 minutes prior. They'll take on either Central Michigan, and I'd say Central Michigan is probably on paper the uh, favored team in the tournament. They returned five starters from 23, a 23 win team a year ago that and they're favored to win the MAC this year. Pepperdine looked awfully good today. They beat Duquesne 84 70. Pepperdine has a good inside outside combination, and they're picked third in a very tough West Coast Conference. So uh, we'll see how the Hilltoppers certainly measure up tonight and with the rest of the teams here in this tournament. Here are the Bulldogs starting five. C.J. Rivers at point, 6'2", sophomore from Illinois. He averages five points and four rebounds a game. He rarely shoots. He's only shot eight times in three games. Graham Woodward is a transfer from Penn State out of the Big Ten. It's his first year at Drake. He's averaging 12. He's a six-foot sophomore from Minnesota. At center is Jacob Innevold. He's out of Denmark, seven foot 250, a junior, four points and six rebounds a game. Reed Timmer is their leading scorer, a great driver. He is a six foot one sophomore from New Berlin, Wisconsin. He averages 20. And rounding out the starting five is Kale Abrahamson. He's a 6'8", 220 pound junior from West Des Moines. He's a transfer from Northwestern from the Big Ten as well. He set out last year, it's his first year at Drake, and he's averaging 15. The Bulldogs average 81, they allow 70. They shoot 51% from the field. They shoot 40% from the three-point line and shoot 70%, uh, I should say 40% from the three-point line and 70% from the free-throw line, and they're a plus four rebounding. Despite the positive numbers, however, they've dropped two of their three. For the Hilltoppers, with two wins and a defeat, and uh, I think when the season is over, you're going to go look back at this win on Saturday and see how good it really was. Stony Brook on Thursday took Vanderbilt into overtime at Memorial Gym before losing. And the Hilltoppers beat Stony Brook 67-66 on Saturday afternoon. We're waiting for a little highlight there, and we'll have you the starting lineups that are being brought to you this evening by Wright Implement Company. They've been Western Kentucky's John Deere dealer since 1936. You'll never go wrong with Wright. Remember, nothing quite runs like a deer. It'll be Chris McNeil at the point. How about this to get his college season and college career started. 13 assists and two turnovers through two games. Six foot freshman from Jackson, Tennessee. Not he has a, a million dollar smile. Yeah, he does. It's not a bad way to get not a bad way to get started. You certainly don't expect that from a freshman his first couple games. Aaron Cosby in a little bit of a slide here shootings to start off this season. Everyone anticipating he'll warm up. Aaron's a six foot three, two hundred pound senior from Louisville. He's averaging ten. Justin Johnson, 6'7", 235, the sophomore from Hazard, Kentucky. 16 points and 11 rebounds per contest. Frederick Edmond is a 6'4", 205-pound junior from Lansing, Michigan. He's averaging 13.6 rebounds and three assists. And rounding up the starting five, making his second start of the season, Anton Waters, 6'7", 245, the junior from Baltimore. He's averaging three points and four rebounds a game. And he had a uh, couple of early baskets in Saturday afternoon's game. He, he had an impact in that game, played well, uh, didn't make any mistakes that come to mind right off, but uh, he certainly took up some space, had some buckets, uh, had a rebounder. Uh, I can't remember the number of rebounds. I should have pulled my stats, but, um, yeah, he had, a, he had a solid start. He had four points in three rebounds in 17 minutes. He had six rebounds in the opener against Campbellsville, four rebounds, two of them offensive against Belmont. He averaged in junior college four offensive rebounds a game. Speaking of offensive rebounds, of course, you mentioned Justin Johnson. Uh, his start of the season, he's averaging the 11 rebounds. He's had 34 rebounds, obviously the most on the Hilltoppers. 16 of those are offensive, 18 are defensive. So Justin has been the pleasant surprise of this early season to, to me. We're in the Germain Arena. It is a hockey rink. They have a lot of concerts in here, too, and a small crowd as we get started. Hilltoppers are moving from right to left in the opening half, and Duke wins a tip. And the Bulldogs have it, and now it's in the hands of Woodward. And he'll walk it up the left sideline with the defense of McNeil. Gets it over the left side to Abrahamson, coming baseline on Johnson. That's an intriguing matchup. Foul line to Innovold, giving it back to their best player. Top of the key jump shot. It's off to the left. No good. It was missed there by Reed Temmer, who's terrific off the dribble. And he pulled up for a jumper and missed it. And here comes McNeil with a jackhammer dribble the front court with the left hand. The topper's first time down the court, just getting started. 
Drake comes out of the man-to-man -man as well. Edmund makes a catch, long range left side. He goes in a corner to Cosby. Timber is on him. Cosby back out to the top of the key to the post. Claire Waters around to the right side of McNeil. He lobs it inside the Johnson. Good catch in traffic. He dribbles once. He goes up strong and puts it around the end with the left hand from the left side of the rim. He's going to be a handful if you let him catch in front of the basket like that. He caught on the weak side on that lob over pass and had to gather himself, had to work to catch the ball. Uh, but he caught it, went to work, used that left hand well off the glass. Cosby drawing the defensive assignment on Temmer. It's his job to slow him down. Left wing three, no good. Tipped out front, retrieved by Innovold, the seven-footer. It was missed by Abrahamson. Now Timmer has it. He loves to go to his left. Cosby must recognize that. He comes to his left. He's into the lane. He's to the hole. He lays it up. It's around that off, and then Innovold tipped it in. But when he tipped it in, it was on the rim, so wipe it away. That time, Timmer, he'll go to his left time and time again, and he was able to get by Cosby, and he got to the rim, but he missed the shot in traffic. Here comes Chris McNeil, the freshman from Jackson, Tennessee. Walks it across the timeline, picks up his dribble at half court, gets it to Webman, now back to McNeil. 2-0, he'll top her lead. Going to right side to Webman against C.J. Rivers. He'll dribble it and go to his left with a pass to Cosby. Squaring up, goes into the paint for a 14-footer. Two! He may have pushed off with the left arm. They didn't call it as he shoved Timmer backwards and then stuck a jumper right between his eyes. There's and no, it's a 4-0 lead. There's no may have to it. He indeed <laughs> used that left hand, gained himself a little room. But knock down the shot nonetheless. Timmer right wing against Cosby. Now dribbles it backwards between the circles. We play two minutes. Pass in the corner to Rivers. He's not much of a shooter. CJ brings it back to the right wing. Goes out to Abrahamson. Johnson on him. Dribbles to his left to the baseline. Leans in trying to draw contact. He didn't, but he banked it in on a run. That's a tough shot. Abrahamson did a nice job going down the left side of the lane, using his body to shield the defender. Got it off the glass. 17.50 to go first half. WKU 4-2 lead. Edmonds to the foul line, cut off by Rivers. He throws it deep to Cosby between the circles. Over in front of the Drake bench to McNeil. McNeil goes in between the circles to Johnson. He works it left side on a pass to Edmund. He crosses over nicely to the left baseline. He's cut off by the six foot, the seven footer. He throws it up and in interval just, just caught it. He didn't block it, he caught it. Here they come, front court, pull up jumper, Woodford, baseline left, low in the iron, no good. Innovold at seven foot, tipped it, but he tipped it out of bounds. So Innovold using his height to his advantage here on both sides of the floor. He's had a block shot. I guess they call that a block even though he caught it. Yeah. There are no such no, things I, as catches. He was just flat-footed. He had his hands up, and Edmund went right into him and he put that big paw on it and took it away. Drake with a 2-2-1 press. It's broken. Edmund coming top of the key. Now retreats and gets it to the right side of McNeil for a long three. In and out. Look good. Didn't go. Innovold corralling it after Abrahamson tipped it to him. Here comes the skinny six foot eight Abrahamson, left wing on Johnson, dumps it in a corner. The catch was made by Woodward, but he was standing out of bounds. He makes a jump shot, but Woodward was standing out of bounds when he received the pass. So Drake has had two baskets waved away, one with an offensive goaltending, the other because Woodward was out of bounds when he caught it before shooting it. Coming into this one, Graham Woodward is seven of 12 from three point land, so he's certainly capable of making those shots. Dominic Olenichik is now in for Drake. He's seven foot and 250, and he's guarding Waters inside. And Hilltoppers break the pressure and make deal with a protective dribble in the right wing. Goes left wing to Cosby, rising and firing a three. That's off to the right. Barely drew iron, and it's a flat footed re rebound by Abrahamson. Make, make that Edmund overplayed the outlet pass, so they, Woodward had to go a little deeper to get it. Now he brings it front court to Abrahamson. He's a transfer from Northwestern in the Big Ten. Rivers has it between the circles against Edmund. Pass comes over the left side to Woodward. He lobs it to Abrahamson, coming baseline on Johnson, reverse left, around the net. He's very quick. Very quick. Johnson and Waters both there tried to get the block on that. He went up and under, shielded the defenders with the rim, and was able to make the reverse layup. 4-4 four, four ties. Evan has it left wing, crossing over to the baseline. Goes up inside and scores. He crossed over on Rivers, put the ball in his right hand, then dribble quickly to his left, went right to the hole and laid it in. You know, Linichek. A little slow to get down there to help. He was trying to get in to give a give a hand to his teammate, but he was step slow, and Frederick Edmund too quick to get that ball on the glass. Tops up 6-4. Abrahamson dribbling to his left again. He's done it every time he's had it. It put the ball on the floor despite being a right-handed player, and he drives left. Now it's out front to Timmer. Timmer driving right. Back to Abrahamson. Fake the jumper. Drives left to the baseline. Puts it up on the run and score with the left hand. Three drives to his left. Three baskets, and the game is tied at six. He's got it figured out over here. I hope the Guys out there on the court that could do something about it, get it figured out. Here's Water, make that Edmund long range right, left side, 6-6 six, six tie, Cosby between the circles. Johnson going to set a pick, Cosby goes into the corner to McNeil, back to Johnson. Fallon jumper, rising, shooting, two! 
four for Justin Johnson, a 15-foot jump shot. The Toppers are leading eight to six with five minutes gone by in the opening half from the Germain Arena in Estera, Florida. Good decision by Justin. He was a little too far out, maybe 18 to 18 feet or so, took one dribble toward the basket, and his defender did not come out and put much of a much of an effort on him, so he jumped up and knocked down the free throw line jumper. Woodward, foul on jumper, Abrahamson. He misses that one. Up high as Edmund had grabbed the rebound, and Edmund is running. Edmund coming front court, dribbling through one, dribbling around another. He draws contact as he lays it up. He was bound to determine he was going to take it coast to coast. He dribbled by one ball, the, the Bulldog, then dribbled in between two and was fouled before the shot. I like guards that can rebound and uh, get the ball the other way, not have to make that outlet pass. Edmund averaging six rebounds a game. Our first media timeout is upon us, 14.43 to go first half. Western Kentucky University 8, Drake 6, and this is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Okay, Hal, prediction time. Oh, gosh. You had to get your predicted score. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not quite ready yet. Okay. Okay. 78, 74 up. I had 79, 75. Jim had 72, 66 if we um, rebound and push it, that's how we're going to win. They're, they're bigger than us. It feels like we can get them, and have, get them up and down and win the game that way. But he started last game, too. Yeah. They want to bring Ben off the bench, and they're not going to play Rose, though. U.S. Bank is proud to be the exclusive banking cornerstone partner of WKU Athletics, all of us serving you at U.S. Bank. The toppers have the ball in bounds. Nigel Snipes is in with Chris Harrison, Docks, and Ben Lawson. Edmund coming baseline right. Hill toppers winning 8-6. to six. Lawson top of the key. The slender center goes to the left. And Snipes down low to Johnson. Double team, but up the shot and missed it. Rivers rebounds. Here comes this quick outlet pass to Timmer. Timmer right side to Abrahamson. Driving and Lawson blocked this shot. Hello. Wow, what a play. Abrahamson wondering where he came from. He didn't see the big Englishman check in. Snipes rising and firing. His three-pointer is short. Johnson kept it alive. It's on the floor, but Drake gets it back, and it's Abrahamson. Lawson now with 10 block shots this early in the season. And he hasn't played a lot of minutes. The most minutes he's played in any of his three games is 14. Yep. Hilltoppers are now in his own. So Rivers has the ball deep on the right. He'll work it out between the circles against Docks. Now to Woodward, deep in the corner. Timmer back to Woodward. Pass inside, knocked away. Abrahamson gets it back on the right side to Woodward. Woodward out front. Abrahamson, three-pointer launching. Good. He has scored all nine Drake points. And the Bulldogs are leading by the score of 9-8. to eight. Yeah, Abrahamson has shot 21 threes and only made five coming into this one. But he's capable. Snipes right side, Edmund Evan fakes a jumper, comes baseline, ready to a double team, rising, putting up, around it in! Edmund in traffic, through a triple team, scores! And the Hilltoppers are winning 10-9. Well, that time, Alunacek did come over and put a hand up, but Fred stopped outside the lane, just had the soft, short jump shot to knock it down. Second lead change of the game, Rivers long range right side against a zone, foul on Abrahamson, spinning to his left on Johnson, back to his right into double team, deep to Woodward for a three, swish. Graham Woodward drops it at three, and Drake is in front, 12-10. And Abrahamson has been a handful early. Docks rising, firing top of the key three. You bet. He answers back, and Docks drops it in, and it's 13-12 tops with 12.44 to go first half. Chris knocks down the topper's first three ball. Chris is eight for 16 from three-point land this year. He's crowding Woodward out of between the circles. Foul line to Timmer into the panel. Edmund goes up inside. Lawson fouled him. It's good. He's fouled it counts. Somehow, Timmer got it up through the long arms of Lawson and put it in. 
That's Timmer's game. Despite being 6-1, he scores a lot of points in the paint on penetration. He led the team in field goals, I should say, in free throws attempted last year as a two guard. And he's now 14 for 14 at a free throw line this year in three games. Yeah, that's a pretty good indication. The fact that he had so many free throws is that he likes to drive the basketball. And uh, he drive it. That time he did drive it. Ben was there, had plenty of arm well above Timmer, but Timmer was able to worm his shot around Ben's outstretched limbs and get it in the bucket. He's out of New Berlin, Wisconsin. He was on the Ohio Valley Conference All-Freshman team last year, averaging 11 a game, and he drops into free throws, a three-point play for Drake. And the Bulldogs have their biggest lead of two at 15-13. We played seven and a half first-half minutes. Marlon Hunter in the ball game now for the Toppers. The freshman has a deep on the right, top of the key to Docks. He went right in and took it away, but then uh, Hunter got it back and goes in the right corner to Nigel, fake the jumper coming baseline. He went around one, went around two, and put it up and in. Who is this Nigel Snipes? <laughs> Well, Nigel showing his versatility. He was a he was the three ball assassin the other night. Here he puts the ball on the floor and gets it into the rim. Snipes ties it at 15. Temmer deep on the right wing against Cosby. Now to Abraham, at the top of the key. Nigel's now guarding him a little quicker than Johnson. Now they give it up to Carl Madison. He's now in at point guard. First time Madison's been in. Abrahamson, three corner, left corner, no good. Cosby rebounding on the baseline. Gives it up to Docks. So the old toppers are running from right to left. Here comes that herky jerky dribble to the top of the key. Leaves it behind him to Snipes. The Atlanta Sooner thought about a three. Goes down the right side to Hunter on the wing. Hunter faking his shot. Goes in between the circles to Dox. And guarding him is Madison. Now out high to Snipes. Hunter on the right. Looking low to Lawson. Lobs it into him. One on one. Goes cross court to Dox. Rising. Firing a three. Short. Bounce off the top of the board. Hunter timed it perfectly and put it in. The man from Memphis played that ball off the top of the board a little better. Timed his jump, grabbed it, did not bring the ball down, put it back up quickly and in, and WKU leads at 17-15. He was behind C.J. Rivers at 6-2. Uh, Rivers just mistimed his jump, and Hunter was right there to put it back. Timber between the circles to Innovold at the top. He holds it back to the basket, hands it off now to Rivers. Rivers in the right corner. You want him to shoot it from the outside. That Abrahamson going left. Snipes cut it off, so he comes back to the right, goes in and Lawson block the shot with a foul. It's on Snipes. They forced Abrahamson to go right that time, and he ran into Lawson. And there is a foul. And as how it pointed out, is on Nigel Snipes, not Ben Lawson, so the first on Snipes. And we have a media timeout, a good one going. The toppers are going to need to find a way to defend Kale Abrahamson off the dribble. At six foot eight, he's hurting the front court people. Tops up 17-15, more to follow on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Kale Abrahamson just hit two free throws for Drake. This game is not being televised, so the timeouts will not be as long as we're accustomed to, so we may miss um, a second or two every time we come out of a break. We apologize for that. 17-17 tie. Cosby deep in the left corner, out top, now to Docks. Drake in his zone for the first time. 
Goes to chest pass to Hunter in the right wing foul line to Snipes. Make the pass inside, dribbles it inside, shoots it over the seven footer, and it's on the rim and in. He rose above Innovold, the seven footer from Denmark, and scored. Innovold, seven foot, not real mobile inside, sort of slow. That time the smaller Snipes able to take advantage of that quickness difference get the ball up over it. Lawson now out there bumping uh, Timmer at half court, trying to double team him, and now Ben Lawson's picked up two fouls, and he's been in foul trouble virtually every game this year. He's only averaging 14 minutes per game, and uh, he is out now with his second foul. We've already had three ties and six first half lead changes. Here's Madison to Timmer against the Hilltoppers. 1-3-1 one, one zone. Alex Rostov in the game now on the baseline and Dox is out front. Maybe it's a 2-3. Yeah, it's kind of bouncing around. Hard to tell. Timber deep on the right. 9.51 to go in the first half. Hilltoppers by two. Timber dribbles to the left baseline. Lobs it up. Ooh. Snipes just missed the interception. Make that Hunter. Now it goes to Madison. Madison hard to the hole. Throws it up wildly. It's tipped and it's controlled by Hunter. Hunter down the middle. A three on two. Hunter to the hole. Hunter lays it up. And the man from Memphis scores. Wow. Three on two, he just took the ball straight down the middle, was was daring the defense to stop him. They never did. He was able to get right to the rim, lay it up over. That's how Hunter averaged 27 a game as a senior in high school in Memphis, that basketball hotbed. Timmer three-pointer right side off the back of the iron. Great block out by Snipes and Rostov, and Rostov grabs the rebound. Now it's in the hands of the point guard Ducks. Between the circles of Snipes on the right side to Cosby. Cosby out high to Rostov, deep on the wing to Hunter. Hunter dribbles it from left to right against Temmer. Deep on the right to Cosby. Dribble drive into the paint to his left. In traffic, put it up low on the iron. No good. Nick McGlynn with the rebound. First time we've seen him. McGlynn, a six foot eight freshman. And a whistle inside and an offensive foul in Innerbold for trying to get position on Rostov under the buckets. McGlynn only plays about seven minutes a game. Averages two and a half points, two and a half rebounds. Has not attempted any long balls. Hill Topper basketball brought to you tonight by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety and also by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, your partner to great outdoors. 8.50 remaining, first half, it's been tight. Four ties, six lead changes. And McNeil back in to run the point. He and Dox are playing in the backcourt together. And Dox has it in the left corner. McGlynn is on him man to man. Deep now to Cosby, back to Dox on the left wing. He goes out top, Cosby, 22 footer. In and out, look good, didn't go. McGlynn with a rebound at six foot eight, up the left sideline to Woodward in the corner for an open three by Madison. That rims in and out, and Docks flying through the air grabs the rebound. Here's Chris Harrison, Docks front court against Madison. Hansen behind him. To, here's Snipes out front. Three pointers yes, perfect sir. after the pass from McNeil. Sniper Snipes continues to bomb from long range, picking right up where he left off in that win the other night. How about 12 for 18 this year for Nigel Snipes from downtown? That's big time there. The Toppers wedding 24-17. They're in the zone. Ori Aragundade is in the game, and he's got a bright red hairdo. Foul off of a docks on a dribble drive from the guard Woodward, working it from right to left. It's an interesting, it looks like a beaver pelt on top of his head. It's <laughs> real short on the sides. And then there's a big woolly mop on the top of his head that goes down to his neck, and it's dyed blonde. I wonder if he was inspired by wildlife. I, I don't know. 7.43 go first half. WKU by 7, 24-17. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network.
And that'll be a foul on Drake, and it's just their third foul. A foul on Billy Wampler, 6'6", 200-pound freshman from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Here's the inbounds pass to Hunter. Shoots a three. Good! I didn't think Marlon had that range. He showed it. He showed it that time. Seven for Marlon Hunter. And it's 30 to 21. Man, he gets that ball. He releases it from so high above his head. It is unblockable. He does. He's, that's, he's attempted three. And that's the first one he's hit so far. Now the inside offensive foul on Drake's Olenicek. He was trying to post up on Johnson. He extended his left arm. He got Johnson right in the chops. And it's an offensive foul on Dominic Olenicek. He's a big lad. 4.37 to go here in this first half. And Snipes will trigger it into Chris McNeil. As he walks it front court against the 2-3 Drake Bulldog zone. The tops are winning by 9 at 30-21. McNeil over in the left wing against Timmer in the zone. He works at the top of the key, goes deep to Edmund on the right. They bring Hunter to the top of the key. Evan dribbles it into Hunter, back to Hunter, rising and firing from 17. Bingo. Swish. Marlon Hunter has nine. Drake doesn't know who Marlon Hunter is, and they take a timeout. Wow, we'll take a quick break. 32-21 tops behind the shooting of Hunter. And this is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Kentucky Legend Ham is one legend folks can depend on. A great time to get a Kentucky Legend Ham here in the holidays. Drake has it front court. WKU by 11. Three-pointer rimming in and out front by Woodward. Nigel Snipes goes up high and comes down hard. Let's hope Snipes is okay. It's off of Snipes and out of bounds. He's getting up gingerly. No one hitting. He was alone when he came back down and looked like he landed awkwardly well, think, and took a tumble. Yeah, I think he, uh, he went up high and sort of was on one of his own players. It's another hilltopper in the vicinity, and I think that's what got his balance messed up, and he lost the ball out of bounds. Abrahamson dribbles it to his left. Snipes stayed right on him, and now Snipes fouls him. He was bound and determined. He was going to take the ball to the rim. Snipes stopped him once, but he was not going to give the ball up. He was going to drive to his left again, and eventually he drew the foul on Snipes. And Nigel Snipes has two fouls with his seven points. Here is Kale Abrahamson, A-B-R-A-H-A-M-S-O-N, a transfer from the Northwestern Wildcat program in the Big Ten. His foul shot's good. Before the break, Marlon Hunter hit, had hit five points in a row. You said the coach didn't know who Marlon Hunter was, and that's one thing about this Hilltopper team is the depth that it has is a huge asset. There's lots of guys that can... They can put up the numbers. It's been Nigel Snipes. It's been Justin Johnson. Those guys are relatively quiet tonight. Now you got Marlon Hunter picking up some of the slack. Abrahamson has 15. He hits two free throws. He scored 15 to Drake's 23. WKU by nine against Drake, 2-2-1. Full court zone pressure. 
McNeil across the timeline, works the ball with his right hand on his right hip. Now has it to Hunter, and now back to McNeil. So the freshmen are out there running the show. Now it's to Edmund, another new player for WKU this year. He goes one-on-one against Rivers. Into the lane, rising, putting it up around, but out, no good. Abrahamson had to knock the way in a foul. Mm. It's either on Waters or I think Edmund. It's on Fred. Unfortunately, Fred was right there, and as Abrahamson came down with the ball, it landed on, as he was coming down, he landed on Edmund's shoulder, and, the, and Edmund's shoulder knocked the ball out of his hands, but uh, they whistled that a foul. So two more free throws for Abrahamson. He scored 15 already. He's four for fourth in line. It's uh, actually one and one. This is team foul eight on WKU. And the right-hander makes it. He has 16 points. Topper's yet to get to the line. WKU has double the fouls, Drake, eight to four. And Abrahamson's having a career game. He now has 17 as he hits a pair. And the Hilltopper lead is down to seven now at 32-25. Here's McNeil in backcourt. Works it up the right sideline. Bounce pass on the right wing to Johnson. Cross court Hunter. Rising 14 footer. In and out. Johnson tipped with the right hand and knocked it in. Justin Johnson. That's what he's been bringing to the floor for the Hilltoppers. That's the first time he's been able to get his hands on an offensive board. He just went up and tipped it in softly off the glass. It is 32-20. Make it to 34-25. Scoreboard still has 32-25. Abrahamson. Oh my goodness. He line drives a three from out further than the top of the key. And now it's 34-29. He'll top her lead is at five as Abrahamson has scored 20 first half points. Johnson spinning underneath the seven-footer. Lena Chicken. He lays it in on a reverse layup with the left hand. Well, Abrahamson previous high had been 19 points against UCLA on November 29th, 2013. And now he has 20 in this one already in the first half. 21 right now. Good. 21 at Drake's 28. Here's Rivers. Stops his dribble in the corner. Timmer dribbling inside. Throws it up wildly and misses. Edmund blocks out. Edmund leading a one-man break. Evan to the top of the key. Evan to the hall around Abrahamson. <laughs> it's good. He's fouled. It counts. There's a one-man fast break by Frederick Edmund. He dribbles off the rebound and takes it all the way down. And Abrahamson fouls him. And the Hilltopper lead is at 38 to 29. Well, it, he would have been called for icing, I think, if this was hockey. I mean, he was ahead of everybody on the hill. But he had the ball, so it wouldn't be icing <laughs> technically. But you know what I mean. I he was out ahead of the pack. There were four Drake jerseys back there. And only one of them, Abrahamson, was, was showing him any attention. The other guys looked like they were picking, picking up their players defensively who weren't even back yet. So uh, not a very good job defensively allowing Fred Edmund to get to the basket score for the toppers. Edmund has six. I don't know that the score is right. They've been messing up time and time again. I think Drake has one too many points on the scoreboard. Let's see if they make that adjustment. And by the way, J.P. Kdever Consulting and Cisco Systems have long been partners in Hilltopper Country since 1992. With the power of Cisco Systems, JBK Never Consulting works for the most prestigious and largest companies in the area and surrounding states, offering a complete lineup of voiceover IP, wireless indoor and outdoor, and a host of superior security solutions, including the very best in professional service. Well, so the next time you're ready to expand or just want to start on rock-solid ground, give JBK Network Consulting a call for all of your Cisco superior products. They are IP everything. They have made an adjustment on the score. It's 38-28. They had Drake with 29. And Edmund rolls the free throw over the front of the rim and in. So now the Hilltoppers are up by 11 at 39-28 with two minutes to go in the first half. I believe that matches their largest lead. Rivers long range right side against the 2-3 zone. They have Cosby up front with McNeil. Woodward deep on the wing. Abrahamson dribbles it to his right to the baseline. Throws a baseball pass, pass cross court for a Rivers jumper. That's no good. Rebounded by Edmund. Here comes that one man break again. He's across the timeline. Cosby makes a catch on the right wing back to Fred. Fred in the paint and he's fouled off the dribble by Woodward. Edmund would have been a sensational football player. Strong. Head down. Good hands. Gets it up and down. And a good running back. And we know all about good running backs on the hill. That is for sure. Yes, sir. By the way, Ace Wales, 100 yards rushing again this past Saturday against FIU. Fifth consecutive conference game that Wales has rushed for over 100 yards. Low to Anton Waters. It's back to the basket. Dribbles it. Dribbles it in tight. Pumping, leaning. Puts up the shot. And Innovold bailed him out by fouling him from behind. So uh, Innovold came in and 
Lipkin crashing down the back of Waters, and Anton Waters will shoot two. He has not attempted a free throw this year. And Jacob Innevold, he was fifth in the Missouri Valley Conference in rebounds and fourth in field goal percentage last year, has a couple of fouls as Waters shoots and makes. Waters has played between 10 and 17 minutes a game so far this year for the Hilltoppers, who are 2-1. and one. Drake, one up, two down. Innevold will leave. He's replaced by Nick McGlynn, a 6'9", 223-pound freshman. Water shooting for a 13-point Hilltopper lead. And he eyes it, he flies it, and he misses it short. WKU has scored six straight. Here's Rivers deep on the left side. His goal this summer was to make 100,000 shots. Let's make 100,000. And uh, he's not a great shooter, so I don't know how many he took. Here's Timmer, left wing, in a corner to Madison. Madison back to the foul line area, stopping. In a corner, Abrahamson rising and shooting. You bet. He has 20. Is that a, I couldn't tell if it was a two or a three. Uh, they give him a two. So a two-pointer from deep in a corner, and Kale Abrahamson has 23 points. Drake has scored 30. WKU 40. Drake 30. Ray takes a quick timeout with 52 seconds to go in the first half, and we'll step away. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network.
talk about tonight. The coaching moment brought to you by Quit Now Kentucky. Uh, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or visit quitnowkentucky.org. Brought to you by the Kentucky Tobacco Prevention and Cessation Program. I know that in the locker room, Coach Harper told his kids that very thing. You got one kid on that team that's, that scored, you know, 90% of their points. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to be more help oriented. You're going to have to play him certainly to, to make him go to his right. And so I'm sure he used that opportunity to bring that to their attention. Drake opens up on a 2-3 zone in the second half. Johnson's foul line dribble deep to right. McNeil for a three. Short. Foul line rebound by Cosby. Punches it backwards and grabs it at half court. New look for WKU. Cosby has the ball at half court. Aaron just one for four tonight. He's missed both of his threes. Came in shooting only 25% for the year. He bounces it softly deep on the right. McNeil lobs it inside of Johnson. Makes the catch. One dribble up inside. He misses a layup. Mm. And Abrahamson guarding him had fallen down. Justin uh, was assuming that he was still there to defend and faked him out, but he wasn't there, and then he missed the, missed the bunny. Timner has the ball to Rivers deep on the right in front of his coach. Ray Jacoletti, former assistant under Mark Few at Gonzaga. He was an assistant a couple of times, so the Hilltoppers played Gonzaga. Gonzaga had two close wins, one time in Alaska, the other time in a um, game out in Portland in the NCAA tournament. They missed a three. They get the rebound for an Abrahamson three. Low on the iron. Followed the shot. Got it back. He knocked McNeil down. Who's the foul on? Abrahamson. That'll be his second foul. So Kale Abrahamson misses the three, then ran over and threw McNeil, grabbing the rebound and committed his second foul. McNeil will walk in front court. The freshman had three assists without a turnover in the first half, so he now has... 16 assists this year with only two bad ones. He backs his way in front court, drops it off on a bounce pass out near center court to Cosby. Back down to right to McNeil in the wing. He lobs it inside the Johnson. Pass wasn't high enough. I jinxed him. But Johnson got it back, puts it up. It's good. He's found it counts. Well, look what I found. The ball was batted around after a bad pass by McNeil. And he just like a hungry lion, he just snatched it out of midair and laid it in in traffic and it was fouled. Kept Chris from having that turnover for sure. Uh, it's the same play they ran before. They get the ball on the right wing, clear out uh, b- with uh, Johnson on the right block, clear out the left side of the floor and do the pass over. That time the ball was just a little bit short, and it was broken up by Abrahamson. And, but fortunately, Johnson stuck with it, was able to get it, put it back in, scored the two, and hit the free throw ensuing. Three-point play for Johnson. And by the way, more good news, that foul on Abrahamson is his third to go along with the 22 points. Rivers baseline bounce pass low to Innovold, who was wide open. Waters late getting over there, and Innovold caught it and laid it in, uncontested with the left hand. The Hilltopper lead is at 9 at 43-34. Two minutes gone by, second half from Florida. We're playing in a hockey arena. have a minor league team here. A little warmer than it was earlier today in the arena. McNeil with a skip pass, bounced at one-handed cross court, and since I bragged about his... Assist to turnover ratio. He's had two bad passes in a row. <laughs> well, that one completed the turnover. That one passed to nobody. He was looking at Aaron Cosby in the in the corner. I don't know if he was anticipating Aaron to cut toward the basket, but uh, that didn't happen. Timmer, they've had great defense on Timmer. He's one for seven. Abrahamson faking a three, coming right in the lane, puts it up. It's good. So he now has 24, and it's 40. 3-36, WKU by 6. 24 for Abrahamson. Well, they held him two and a half minutes before he scored, so that's a plus. His previous career high was as a Northwestern Wildcat against UCLA at 19. Edmund misses a three. But nobody blocked out Cosby on the other side, and the six-foot three guard came in and grabbed it and laid it in. All the way from the left wing. I'm not sure the three is Fred's, uh, Fred Edmund's biggest asset, but he launched it anyway, and Cosby came in and Put it back in. Just the second one he's attempted this year. 45-36. Hill toppers by nine. Abrahamson top of the key. Dribbles it left and stops. Dumps it low to Innovold. He goes cross court on the right side to Timmer. Timmer dribbles it into the lane left-handed. He throws it back on the right wing. And Woodward for the second time today made a catch standing out of bounds. That time, first time he was pretty much staying in one place. That time he was on the move but uh, found, him, found himself out of bounds. The coach... Duquette is uh, talking to the official, said that he was um, forced out. Tonight's logistics of the game are being delivered to you by UPS from figuring it out to getting it done. UPS is here to help. Visit solvers.ups.com to learn more. Drake back in the 2-3 zone. Docs swings it right side, Edmund on the wing. 
Fred held the four points in Saturday's win against Stony Brook. Right at Keith Johnson. Left side comes to Docks. Gets a pick from Johnson. Dribbles it from left to right. On the wing now to Edmond. Down in the corner. Cosby wide open for a three. No. Foul on rebound by Timmer. Drake with a three on two. Cross court to Woodward. Driving in. Put it up. And it's good. Edmond took a swipe at it from behind. Unable to get contact with the ball. 16-16 to go. WKU by seven. Cosby still trying to find his outside game. Cosby, chest pass left wing Edmund back to Cosby out high. It's a pick from Snipes, goes to the right wing. Goes cross court to Docks on the left. They're trying to get inside to Snipes or Johnson. Cross court Edmund, baseline drive around Inable like he's standing still and he lays it in off the window. Well, Fred was in the corner. Invold came out about halfway to try to get him. Fred caught the ball on the run. Invold was like he was standing in quicksand couldn't move quickly enough to stop off Fred's uh, or to block off Fred's progress to the to the baseline and then to the basket like he was in wooden shoes exactly <laughs> being from Denmark pass low to Enneville fumbled it off his wooden shoes and got it back puts it in the paint spins right hooks it around and in tough move persistence paying off for Jacob Enneville it's 47 40 Hilltopper lead at 7 15 20 to go second half Cosby deep on the right top of the key to Snipes left side Edmund against the zone Evan deep to Cosby, picking right, coming left in the paint. Jump pass coming in the corner to Nigel. He faked the jumper. He comes right. He's in the lane. All the way under with a nice dish. Justin puts it up. It's around the end. And that's a fantastic feed from Nigel Snipes. Boy, that was. That was a great penetration and great, great pass. Five minutes gone by. Second half. WKU by 9, 49-40. Nigel Snipes playing like he's never played before on the hill in the senior season. Snipes knocks it away at half court. It's on the floor. Woodward gets it, and Snipes accidentally kicked it. And Drake will get it back, and we have a media break. 14.45 to go, second half. Hilltoppers 49, Drake 40. And this is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. tonight. WKU winning 49-40. We hope to have a happy Medical Center post-game show when this one is over. The Medical Center is the official health care provider of WKU Athletics. Drake has the ball. Rivers makes the inbounds pass off to our left. or right at center court. Right on the floor here at the Germain Center. Woodward has it against Docks. Hilltoppers in his zone. Woodward out front. Wide open. Three-pointer. Swish. Too good a shooter to leave open. Ten for Woodward. And the Hilltopper lead is down to six at 49-43. Docks has it out front. One dribbled over to Cosby on the right. Now back to Docks. Drake now in a man-to-man. Docks in front of his bench with left hand. Whoa. <laughs> Watching this little exchange in the middle between Johnson and Nick McGlynn. Yeah, McGlynn. McGlynn had him across the across the neck. And quite a bit of shoving, pushing and shoving going on. Finally, McGlynn whistled for that foul. Third foul on Drake. Hilltoppers haven't had a foul this half. That's good news. Snipes hands it off at half court to Cosby. And Hilltoppers now under attack with a six-point lead. Six-foot-one guard. Now Docks has it between the circles. He works it over on the right wing. He stops. 
He throws the baseline to Eben. One dribble up on on uh, Abrahamson. He went over the six foot eight player and put it off the window and in with three fouls. So he had to back off a little bit, and Edmund laid it in. Yeah, it's a tough shot. Edmund was uh, at about a sixty degree angle when he let that one go to to the side. Uh, think of ten and four. That's uh, on the clock. His body, his head was at ten, and his feet were at four. Abrahamson wow. then launching a three over Snipes from the perimeter on the left side, and he now has twenty seven. 51-46, still toppers by five. 13-34 to go in the game. Docks on the right side to Snipes against the zone. Stops, looks, out high to Docks. Left side, Cosby, wide open. Here's his three, missing it badly. Boy, he's, Lynn rebounding. He's got a hitch in his shot. I can't, uh, haven't watched him enough to see. Hadn't been around very long, but it looks like there's a little hitch in that shot. Woodward blowing by Docks, puts it up, missed it. Johnson rebounding and was fouled. Woodward able to blow by Docks off the dribble, but he had a lot of uh, speed and put it up quickly. And the ball hit off the iron, and Johnson had inside position and was fouled over the back. 14 fouls now on the Bulldogs. Cosby leaving. He's replaced by McNeil. Lawson is back in. Ben, once again, a shack of a foul trouble. He has three fouls and has only played just a few minutes again this evening. Five minutes played for Ben. He has two blocks, but three fouls. Coach Giacoletti for Drake takes Abrahamson out to give him a breather and brings in Olenicek. So he got some size back out on the court. Edmund dishing to Docks in a corner, missing it long. Rebounded by Drake, and they are running, and they're only down by five. Woodward in the paint stops, and he's bumped by McNeil off the dribble and fouled. Drake will get it back, down by five, 51-46. First team foul of the half for the Hilltoppers. Casey Schlatter now checks in for the first time. A six foot ten freshman from Iowa Falls, Iowa. He has the ball in the right corner. He averaged 36 points a game as a high school senior. Timmer going in, missing it off the run. He's one for eight. Snipes had ripped the ball away from the taller Olenichik. And now the Hilltoppers have it front court. Driving to the hole, putting it up wildly and, and tipping it oh. in was Lawson, but the ball was on the rim. McNeil launched the ball on the rim. Lawson then tipped it, but the ball was still on the rim when Ben shoved it in. So it is an offensive goaltending violation. I, I can't be for 100% sure, but I thought the ball might be going in. Yep. He had a lot of English on it, and it was on the rim when Ben touched it over and in. So Dirk gets it back down by five. Woodward spinning by McNeil to the free throw line. Not at Timmer on the right wing. Timmer averaging 20 a game, but he has been blanket. He's in on Docks, went up for the shot, and Docks knocked it out of bounds under the basket in front court. 10 on the shot clock. Timmer has one basket. That's it. He's averaging 20 a game, but his teammate, Abrahamson's taking up the slack. He scored 27, and he averages 15. Edmund will lead with 11 points. Marlon Hunter back in. First time Marlon's played this half, and he was a big key in the first half with nine points off the bench. Woodward, hard on McNeil. Lawson came over and blocked the shot out of bounds. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Ben Lawson with his third block of the game. Ben in limited minutes now has 12 blocks this year. Three on the shot clock. Woodward holding a ball, holding a ball, holding it, throwing it deep. It is caught by Timber, dribbling into the paint up on Nigel. Off the iron, no good. And Snipes corrals it in traffic. Here's his outlet pass to Chris Harrison Docks. Docks going into the lane for a runner, and it rattles home. What a play by Chris Harrison Docks. High degree of difficulty, but Chris Harrison Docks with the killer instinct in the paint. Got that one over the rim. Eight for Docks. 11.45 to go second half. Hilltoppers by seven, 53-46. Rivers bolts the pass inside to Timmer. Timmer up, had a block by Snipes. It's picked up at the foul line by Snipes. He's everywhere. <laughs> Here's Docks down the left sideline. Snipes is on his right. Snipes sets a pick for him. Docks on the right, back to Nigel on the left. He's feeling it, three in the air. No off to the right side. Lawson tipped it, Lawson got it back, great play. Ben now deep in the right to McNeil, penetrating in the paint, coming down on the double team, and he's knocked to the floor and fouled. And hustle on both ends defensively by Snipes, offensively by Lawson. And we go to a break, and McNeil will shoot free throws as WKU leads it 53-46. And we'll take a break, 11-19 to play. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network.
have a business and you just want to expand, give JBK Network Consulting a call for all of your Cisco Superior products. They work with companies all over Kentucky and really throughout the United States. They are IP everything. At the free throw line is Chris McNeil, and he just made the first free throw, so the Hilltopper lead is back to eight. He shoots again, and that one's good. So the Hilltoppers are now up by nine points at 55 to 46 with 11-19 to play here in the first round of the Gulf Coast Showcase. WKU will meet either Weber State or Central Michigan tomorrow. They'll play after this one's over. Abraham Hansen dribbles to his left against Snipes. Backdooring docks with Rivers. They throw it on a perimeter for a Woodward top of the key three. Missing it short. Abraham Hansen rebounding. Then he's clobbered by Ben Lawson. And now the Hilltopper center has four fouls. Good ball movement that time by the Bulldogs. Worked it around the horn. Got a good good look, in, uh, good look sh at the, the shot from, with uh, Woodward at the top of the key. Phew, spit it out, Hal. Uh, but anyway, long rebound. Winds up in whose hands but Abrahamson. He gets two free throws now. He's six for six, and now he's seven for seven. I don't believe he's touched the rim on any of his free throws. He's a six foot eight, 218 pound junior from West Des Moines, Iowa. He started his career in the uh, Big Ten with Northwestern, and now he is a Bulldog. He sights, he shoots, he makes 29 for Abrahamson, and it's 55-48, Hilltoppers by seven. Nine minutes gone by second half, and now the Bulldogs have a 2-2-1 two, two, full-court press. Backward pass comes to Docks to the baseline. Swing it left side, McNeil. Cross court at front court to Johnson, and they back off, and now McNeil has the ball in his hands. Overhead pass to Docks. Docks to the top of the key. Deep down to McNeil on the left side. He's in the corner of the pass. Baseline drive by Nigel. Puts up over the ball. It's oh good. It's about it counts. No, that was the man from Memphis, Marlon Hunter. He broke in from the corner, and Hunter now has 11 points and will shoot a free throw. Well, I don't know how he got that ball off. I mean, his defender was there, and then the, then the helper came across. That was the big guy in bold, and still was able to get that ball up just enough to spin it off the glass and crawl over the rim. The first teamer from Memphis, Tennessee, a 3A first teamer last year, averaged 27 as a senior, averaged 24 as a junior, and he's completed a three-point play, and Marlon Hunter has scored 12, and the Hilltoppers are back up by 10 with 10.46 to go, and the bench points WKU scored tonight have just been off the charts. I mean, off the charts. Here's Abrahamson, headed to key against Johnson, playing him with three fouls. Dribbles it to his left, to the left baseline on Johnson. Johnson cut him off. He throws a baseball wow. cast pass. It's corralled nicely by Madison, one handed at half court. Madison to the right wing. He's looking to throw it to someone. Now they give it to Oregon Donaday into the paint, and he runs to his left and puts it up on a hook shot and scored. Oregon Donaday with a great shot. 58-50. Docks out front. Takes the pass. Stops his dribble. Now in the middle to McNeil. McNeil will work it from left to right. Bounce foul line to Nigel. Bounce mm. pass in traffic. Forced it. It's out of bounds. Off of the Bulldogs. And it'll be WKU basketball on the baseline with 9.58 to play. And WKU leading it by eight. They've led most of the game. Drake had three early leads of only two points apiece. McNeil will make the Baseline bounce pass, 13 seconds on the shot clock. He's lobbing it deep in the half court to Docks. He's guarded by Madison. Madison giving him plenty of space to operate with. He'll get a pick from Johnson. Goes to his right to the top of the key and launching an off-balance jumper. And it's long. And creeping back to grab the rebound was the guard for Drake Rivers. He throws it front court to Abrahamson. He throws it down low to Interval. He laid it up. He missed the shot. He got it again. Snipes ties him up. Snipes knocked it away. It's out of bounds. And it's off of Interval. And Snipes just had another great defensive play. Well, Ennevold brought the ball down to his chest, and Snipes quick with those hands. Got, up, got him around it, Ennevold tried to jerk it away, and doing so, he ball trickled out of bounds off his chest. Nigel so much stronger this year in the he upper is. body, and he it's is. paid off with his rebounding in place just like that when he's able to knock it away from strong defenders inside, from strong offensive players inside. McNeil on the left wing in the corner to Docks. Baseline pass to Snipes, back to the basket. Jumper from 10 over Innevold. High arcing shot, no good. McNeil up high for the rebound. The point guard missed a shot inside. Innevold rebounding for the Bulldogs. Here's his outlet pass to the right side to Madison. The point guard comes front court with his left hand to dribble. He now slows it down. Abrahamson, 25-footer, swish! My goodness. He now has scored 30. They've got 32 up on the board Eight. over us. 32 for Abrahamson. 58-53, Ray Harper asking for a timeout with 8.53 to go here in the second half. Kale Abrahamson with 32 of Drake's 53 points. They're going to extend this one to a full timeout. 
and we'll take a break. 58-53 tops. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. It, that's Crossroads IGA. Well, you had Abraham Abrahamson with 30. The board up above us has him for 32, and now the official stats that are passed around has him at 29. So he's got a bunch. I can tell you he has more than 29. <laughs> Here's McNeil behind the back out front now to uh, Docks. Over now on the right side to McNeil. WKU. Shot clock at three. Docks in front of us. Shot clock at two from Ty Rogers land. The air ball that was serving for the floor and goes out of bounds. They did, did not recognize the shot clock was expiring, and by the time Docs realized it after McNeil had given it to him, he had to throw it from way deep in the air ball. You may have been the one to give him the reminder. Here's Carl Madison. He'll walk at front court against McNeil. Abrahamson on the left wing to the left baseline. Fall back 14-footer off the iron and Holy in. Smokes. We're going to give him 34, and it's 58-55. Here's McNeil the other way. Eight minutes to go. Abrahamson, the one-man show for the Drake Bulldogs. The toppers have led by as many as 12. Lead down the three because of Carl Abrahamson. McNeil on the left wing. McNeil goes cross-court to Edmund on the right. Dribbles to the right side. He's the triple team that's wrestled away, and Drake steals it. Or a gun today with a steal. Abrahamson on the left wing. Against Snipes to the free throw line. He's in the paint. Goes on the right side to Madison who faked the three. He comes into the lane. He goes cross court to Rivers. He dribbles to the baseline and cut off. Overhead pass to Madison. Fumbled it. And Or a gun today gets it back out front. He dribbles it to his right and stops. Down a low pass. Bat away by Johnson. Slow. Uh, let's see. Oh, Drops a little slow going after that one. And a foul. That one's going to be on Chris Harrison Docks. 7.30 to go in this second half, and we have another media break. And Drake right now with some momentum. They've cut the Hilltopper lead to three. 58-55, Western Kentucky University leading. And we'll take a timeout on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network.
Drake hasn't been this close since it was 1917. WK's lead at three. Abrahamson 28 feet away at the top of the key. To Timmer on the right. Timmer dribbles to his left in the lane. Back to Abrahamson. Take the three. Steps to the foul line. Walked all over the place. Put it up. It's good. He's found it counts. Isn't that a traveling violation in the United States? Uh, yeah, but Jermaine Arena may not have gotten that, gotten the word. He scores. We'll get a chance to tie at the free throw line. 7.06 remaining. I didn't catch who the foul was on. He has scored 36 points. He is 8 of 8 at the free throw line. He has been unstoppable, both perimeter jumps, jump shots, and moving off the dribble. And he has just hit a free throw, and he scored 37 of Drake's 58 points. And this game is tied at 58. Drake in his own. Snipes deep on the right. Foul line to Evan. Goes in hard on Innervold. Follow away, side to the side of the board. It rolls out front. It's gathered up by McNeil. McNeil to the free throw line. Basketball to Edmund. Up on Interbold. No good, but Interbold fouled him. Edmund will shoot a pair with six minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Well, again, now we've got an official stats handed to us, and they've got 34 for Abrahamson. The board above us has him at 37. <laughs> is this not coming from the same source? <laughs> Here is Edmund shooting two, and the first one is short. Fred has 11. Hilltoppers tonight are 6 of 9 from the free throw line. Innovold departs. McGlenn replaces him. Drake last had a lead of 9-8. And Edmund hits 1 of 2. So it's 59-58 Hilltoppers. Edmund will leave. He's replaced by Cosby. And the Hilltoppers are going to press. Ray mentioned on the pregame show, he was a little hesitant to press at this stage. Didn't feel like his team had completely mastered it yet, but he's in a press right now to try to change things up. Madison coming front court against McNeil and Cosby. He's now in the right wing. Or Donaday has it. Now back to Madison. McGlynn setting a pick. He goes left side to Timmer. Timmer faked the shot. Abrahamson has it inside to McGlynn. Went by Lawson, put up the shot, and Ben has just fouled out. Ben went for the steal in the pass and missed it. And then as McGlynn is dribbling in for the basket to give Drake a lead, he fouled him, and Lawson is fouled out. Fred Edmond checking in quickly will replace Lawson. Ben doesn't score tonight while fouling out. He was probably in eight minutes total. Yeah, eight minutes. He's played no more than 12 minutes, 14 minutes in the game this year. McGlynn's foul shot is good. And this game is tied for the first time since it was 17-17. It's now 59 apiece, and McGlynn has scored three points. He's shooting for a Drake lead, and it's perfect. Our first lead change since the first half. We had six early lead changes, and now Drake leads it 60-59. to 6.25 left to go in the game. And they're in the 1-2-2 zone. They've completely taken the Hilltoppers' inside attack out of the game. McNeil to the foul line, stopping, throws it down and low inside to Johnson, up inside on the rim and in. There's that inside game as he muscled up over McGlynn and in. Yeah, McGlynn had the ball blocked, but Johnson's so strong. Strong like Bull, able to get the ball up through the contact over the rim. Johnson with 15, blocking foul to McNeil coming front court, crowding Carl Madison off the dribble. Team foul six, it's not a shooting foul for Drake. Johnson, 15 points, but just two rebounds this evening. He came in averaging 11. They've done a great job keeping it off the boards. Drake has the ball in bounds, and it is Madison with the ball at half court. Tops in his own. Madison slows it down, looks it over. He's a 5'11 freshman guard from Springfield, Illinois, and he has it between the circles. Works it to his left and stops. Abrahamson, top of the key, spins to his right. Ball back jumper over McNeil. Off the iron, twice and off. Johnson blocking out is fouled. And Johnson will shoot free throws on the other end. McGlynn went over his back. Just a circus shot, a spinning fall away shot. And the dog went thing and almost crawled over the rim and in, but it fell off, fortunately. Toppers with a good box out and uh, fouled in the ensuing scrum. Johnson will get a chance here for one and one. Abrahamson now 11 of 18 shooting from the field. Johnson has made his only free throw, six of nine this season. He's had a couple of double-doubles already this year in just three games. He's shooting off to our right, and that one is in and out. And Abrahamson has the rebound. WKU has missed two of their last three free throws. Woodward walks at front court, bouncing it to Abrahamson. Now to Timmer on the left. He holds the ball on his hip. 
or gun today. Now over to Woodruff on the perimeter. Cross courts it to Timmer. Comes left on Cosby to the baseline. Leans in on Cosby. Shot it short. It was an air ball and Justin rebounds. He's leading the break to Edmund. Back to Justin. Puts it up and it's off the iron. Tipped it by Edmund. No. Nigel gathers it up and Nigel Snipes lays it in for a three-point lead. Justin kind of caught the ball awkwardly. Was kind of uh, didn't know whether to dribble it or just go up with it. He shot it awkwardly and Snipes with the follow-up. Drake asking for a timeout, 4.58 to go, and we'll step out, tops by three, 63-60, and this is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Buzzer beating win, 101-99 in Tampa in the NCAA tournament. Wouldn't you know it? It's a three-point game here. <laughs> Timber dribbles to the foul line. Goes deep now to Oregon today. In the corner to Abrahamson. Coming baseline to the double team. Throws it inside. It's dropped. It's picked up now and backward by Cosby. Cosby up the right sideline. Coming front court right in front of us. Cross court to the Snipes who traveled. Mm. Snipes hit about a 22-footer, but that's after he traveled. Looked at Coach Harper. Coach Harper nodded. Said, go play defense. Let's go. Nigel this evening off the bench has nine points and five rebounds. The Hilltoppers off the bench have outscored Drake 27 to four. In the paint, they've outscored Drake 36-22. But because of Kale Abrahamson, it's only a three-point game. Timmer down the middle against Snipes, goes in the corner. Abrahamson fake the jumper, coming baseline at a double team. Throws it out front for a Woodward three, and the game is tied again. He's hit two threes. And it's 63-63. Here's Snipes on the right. In low to Edmund against Interval. Jumper over him. Off the iron, no good. Woodward rebounding. Drake running. Tie game. Woodward looking for Abrahamson. He's on his left. Woodward. Right side open. Timmer faked the three. Steps to his left. Jump pass coming cross court to Woodward. Was behind him, but he saved it. And now yo-yo it and back up against McNeil. Penetrates the foul line. Then her hands it to Timmer. Three for the lead. Swish. Mm. Reed Timmer. Drake now with their biggest lead of the game. 66-63. Three minutes and 42 seconds are left. That's only the second time Timmer has made a shot in the game. He's two for ten. Edmund. Bullet pass. Johnson based on that from the interval. Twisting. Turning. Double team. Jump pass. McNeil. Three for the tie. Nope. It's off to the right. And Timmer rebounds. Drake will now walk in front court with a three-point lead. 3.19 to go. Woodward has the ball at half court. He's hit a couple of clutch threes in the second half. Drake now slowing it down. Snipes is guarding Abrahamson. Or gun today as it right at a key to Abrahamson. Fall back, three-headed a key. Off the iron. Johnson blocking out the seven-footer nicely. Enabled Evan to get the rebound for WKU. And up on the right sideline to McNeil. Hilltoppers needing a bucket. They're down three. Three need, minutes to go. Need to attack the rim. Cosby walked. Threw it up wildly. Missed everything but the rim. Edmund rebounding. Back up. Puts it up around the net. They're not calling traveling violations tonight. And thank goodness they didn't call one there as Edmund corrals the air ball and laid it in. Well, that's that's what you have to do when you need a basket badly and you're, you're struggling for but Get the ball up there. Get the ball in the paint. Get it on the glass. Go after it. Tops have done a nice job on the offensive glass so far this season. And they did it right there again. Abrahamson cooling off. He's missed his last three shots. Gives it up to Temmer. Temmer head down into the paint on Cosby. Cosby knocked it away. And if Ulbrich he's in the corner, back to Abrahamson. He dribbles into the lane. Puts up the shot. Low on the iron. Snipes rebounding. 2.15 to go. Abrahamson's missed four in a row. Looks like he's a bit winded now. Here's McNeil. Left wing. Foul line extended. Johnson holds it behind into Nigel. Nigel left wing dribble. Into the corner for McNeil. Three. No good. And either Snipes or Johnson commit the rebounding foul with 2.03 to go. Probably not the shot they wanted from McNeil deep in the corner. That soon into the shot clock. And we've reached our final media timeout of the game. Drake 
They'll be shooting free throws. It'll be a one and one. And the Bulldogs are up by one at 66-65 with 2.03 to go in the game. And this is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Got gotcha. you. Perfect jump shot, rose up and nailed it, left it a key, and the game is now tied at 68. Good time for Nigel to find his second three ball. It's two of four now from long range, and the tops as a team. Five of 20. You've struggled oh, from. They sure have. 42% is the team coming into this game. 
Chris has been a little off his three-point shot tonight, speaking of ducks, and coming out of the time, that'll be Edmund Johnson, Snipes, Cosby, McNeil, a very short lineup. Meanwhile, Drake goes with uh, Abrahamson at 6'8", Intervold seven feet tall. Then you have three guards in Rivers, Woodward, and Timmer. 58 seconds are left, shot clock's at 20, game tied at 68, and here comes Woodward. Edmund on him, man on man. He works it to the right wing. Now he's in between the circles. Abrahamson against Johnson. Looking inside to Interval, not open. Dribbles it to his right, back to his left. Johnson guards him, and he runs over Johnson, and Abrahamson has just charged. Holy moly, what a play from Johnson. Man, that is just hard-nosed defense. He knew he was going to cut that way to the left. We talked about it from the first two or three possessions. He went left every time. Johnson anticipating it, took the charge right in the breastbone, gets the critical position or possession back for the tops tied up at 40 seconds 44 on the game clock 30 on the shot clock McNeil brings it front court and we'll keep it here 38 seconds are left he'll toppers against Drake and where's Ty Rogers when he need him against Drake <laughs> Going to give it to Edmund out near the top of the key, and he's going to go one on one. Drake will come out and see if they go man or zone. 24 on the shot clock, 38 on the game clock, and we have a tie at 68. Hilltoppers won their last game, 67 66 over Stony Brook. McNeil throws the ball in bounds to Johnson, hands it back to McNeil. McNeil's at half court. Drake in a man to man, Woodward guarding McNeil. Abrahamson has four fouls, he's on Snipes. Snipes has the ball between the circles, deep down to Edmund, 15 on the shot clock, he's at the top of the key. Deep down to right to McNeil, and the right corner to Cosby, 10 on the shot clock, dribbles to the foul line, top of the key to Snipes, Snipes to his right, to the right baseline, cut off, five on the shot clock, low to Johnson, back to Nigel, three for the lead, short, Johnson tips it, and it's retrieved by Abrahamson. 10 seconds ago, Drake has the ball back court, tie game. Here's Woodward across the timeline, Woodward top of the key to Abrahamson, Five seconds, four seconds, right side key, behind the back, three seconds, two seconds, 35 footer to buzzer. It oh. is in and out. It went in and out off the glass, and we go to overtime. <laughs> he was stepping away and falling back. It went in the basket and spun out off the glass, and we'll go to overtime. He nearly scored points 40, 41, and 42 of the game, but he's denied. And it's 68-68 My heart at the end of the stopped. I thought we were going to go even Steven on that one, and they were going to put a dagger in us with the three ball at the at the, uh, at the the buzzer. But it didn't happen. We're going to overtime. I sure thought it was going down. When it hit the glass, I thought it was in. Yeah, well, he was Woo. found to determine he was going to shoot it. He stepped back, falling away, and launched it. It hit off the glass first, went in the bucket, and then popped out. He said, we will play five additional minutes, and we'll t take a timeout. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sportsnet. No, we're going to keep it right here. Oh, okay. This is our first overtime game of the year. WKU 68, Drake 68. 
Innervold will jump it against Johnson. Johnson 6'6", Innervold 7 feet tall. So Drake should get the tip. No, Johnson does. There you go. Quick jumped him. Hill toppers have it in a tie game. We're in overtime. They led by as many as 12. Snipes dribble drive on Abrahamson with four fouls. Missed it, then tipped it up left hand and missed it. And it's out front. Rivers gets it. Three on two. Cross court to Woodward to his right. Lost the ball off the dribble and got it back in the corner. Hilltoppers thought he double dribbled. They throw it in low to Innervold against Johnson. He's seven foot Johnson, 6'6", six, six, barrels into him. He's double team. Back on the wing for a Woodward three over Edmund. Switch. He's hit three threes since halftime. Somebody's got to help. Drake 71, WKU 68. And it's Edmund in half court with 419 left. He's on the left wing to the left baseline. He's under the basket. He's cut off by the seven footer. And then Rivers came in to double team and punched it away out of bounds. Chris McNeil got the ball out of bounds at the other end, and all the other Hilltoppers turned and ran the other way. He was left with nothing to do. Finally, Edmund went back to about uh, two-thirds court, was able to help out. McNeil holding it, lobbing it deep out front, leaping grab by Cosby over Rivers. Cosby between the circles, stops, lobs it on the right to McNeil. McNeil back to Cosby on the left with four minutes to go in the game. Back to McNeil on the right. McNeil into the paint, spinning to his right. Up over Abrahamson. It is good! And the Hilltoppers have cut the Drake lead to one at 71-70. Spinning move by McNeil. His first bucket of the game, and it comes in overtime. Check out that awareness. He knew Abrahamson had three or four fouls, and he took it right into him. Abrahamson over now on the left to Woodward. 3.38 left to go in the game. Drake by one in overtime. Woodward gives it up deep on the left to Rivers. Foul line to Ibrahamson. Actually top of the key, Ibrahamson. Dribbles it and throws it behind him to Timmer. Timmer to his left. Coming down on Johnson. Put it up. Mm. It's good. He spouted. It counts. He loves to drive left. He turned the corner. Driving left. Johnson fouled him. And Drake leads by three. And Timmer shooting a free throw. And he hasn't missed one the entire season. That was great body control by Timmer. He took that contact. Threw it up off the glass with his left hand and knocked it in. Chance to give his team a four-point lead, their biggest of the game. Very no, that's not right. Very strong guard. you got to believe they've led by yeah, more than four. Yeah, that's right, though. Timmer shooting for a four-point lead, and he makes it. It's 74-70. Last year, he shot 86% from the free throw line, and this season, he is 16 of 16. Now the Hilltoppers are down by four with 320 to go. Cosby left, foul line, Edmund. Edmund. Back to McNeil, long three, swish! Mm. Chris McNeil with a three following his two. His first one of the night. And now it's 74-73, Drake by one. Three minutes, nine seconds left in overtime. Woodward deep to Rivers on the left against Edmund. Out front to Ennevold, the center dribbles once and hands it off to Woodward. Woodward behind the top of the key. Abrahamson's been guarded by Snipes. He's at the foul line extended left side. The lava load to Ennevold against Johnson. He knocked Johnson down. Then as Johnson was falling down and on his back, he reached up because Innervold brought the ball down low and fouled him on a shot. So Innervold will shoot two for the year, two of four at the free throw line. And Justin Johnson has four fouls. Ray going very small. Lawson's fouled out. And Johnson's a six-foot-six uh, forward. He's guarding the seven-footer Innervold. Innervold shooting, and he makes that one. That is his first point of the game. No, I'm sorry, he had his first free throw. He has five points. He's a seven-foot junior out of Denmark. Drake by two, 75-73, with two minutes and 47 seconds left at the Gulf Coast Showcase here in Florida on the uh, Gulf Coast. It's the third year they've had the tournament. There's not a Florida school in the tournament, which is sort of odd. The Florida Gulf Coast isn't in this tournament. And their campus is just down the road. They were in it last year. Mm -hmm. They uh, don't know if we're going to make a change on the clock or not. They had a little delay there, which isn't always the best for the free throw shooter. Interval now ready, the right-hander. He's perfect on that one. Drake's been shooting great free throws in the second half. They have not missed a second half free throw. And Drake leads at 76 to 73. When you say you've iced the free throw shooter in this, this arena, it has a couple, a couple of different meanings. Uh, you stand still very long and you will freeze. Drake's only missed one foul shot the entire game. McNeil, stutter step to his left wing, deep to Johnson. Left, right side, Snipes. Dribbles the foul line, deep to Justin. The Snipes, top of the key. Three for the tie. Dell! 
Cologne wow. over a hand. Abrahamson at 6-8 on the 6-6 six, six snipes, and Nigel went up and over him to tie the game at 76. And what a game. It has been. Abrahamson really didn't attack snipes at all. He put the hands up and made him shoot over him, but again with four fouls, he doesn't want to foul out. Snipes now scored 15. Rivers to Woodward between the circles. Dribbles it to his right. Went into the lane. Wild crazy oh shot goodness. with a right hand. Flipped it up backwards with his right hand and it went off the glass and in. Nice penetration move by Woodward. Just uh, unconscious really. Threw it up with the right right spin off the off the square. Transfer from Penn State with a great shot there. An acrobatic move. Break by two, 78-76. McNeil in the right corner. A minute 38 to go. Edmund has the ball. Long range right side. Crossing over to the foul line. Cut off nicely by Rivers. Back behind in McNeil. A minute 30 to go. He'll launch you three off the dribble. Swish! Are you kidding me? <laughs> three <laughs> perimeter jumpers from McNeil in overtime, and he had not made a shot the entire game. And the Hilltoppers are back in front by one. 79-78 with a minute 15 to go. You talk about a confident young man. My goodness, take a shot in that situation and have the confidence to make it. It's incredible. Abrahamson in the lane, left-handed shot, drives in and scores, and Drake is in front. 80 to 79. 41 for Abrahamson. That now ties him for the most points ever scored against WKU. Skeeter Swift did it in 1969 for East Tennessee State at Diddle Arena. Gets that great Hilltopper team and went 22 and 3. Pass inside, knocked away. Cosby trying to find Edmund. Drake now has it. 27 on the shot clock, 44 on the game clock, and Drake leads it by one, and they'll take a timeout. So Drake now leads it 80 to 79. WKU with a pass that was picked off, and the Bulldogs have it. They're leading by one. And the last thing you want to do is send them to the free throw line. They've missed one free throw the entire game. Got to play some hard-nosed defense. There's still, still lots of time. 38 seconds, 21 on the shot clock. So you've got, got to assume you're going to get the ball back, possibly down. You know, could be as many as five. Four, I guess, if they hit a three. So uh, Tops need to just defend. Good, honest, nose-to-nose -nose defense right here. WKDI bringing you the statistics update as uh, Drake has gone 17 of 18 from the free throw line. WKDI is the partner of the medical center and a leader in providing quality imaging services and excellent customer service to patients and referring physicians throughout South Central Kentucky. Hilltoppers win. They'll play late tomorrow. If they lose, oh, we'll have an afternoon game. Losers bracket game would start at 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern. Winners bracket game, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. Drake has it, 30 seconds to go. Shot clock's at 15. Drake by one. Rivers deep on the right in front of his bench. Abrahamson's posting up low on the other side against Snipes, who has four fouls. Woodward low to interval. Top of the key to Abrahamson. Dribbles it to his left. McNeil's now on him. Shot clock at one. Temmer throws it up wildly. It's an air ball. It's rebounded by Edmund. 17 seconds left. Edmund coming across the timeline. Down one. Edmund to the right corner. Had it knocked away. Then tried to save it. He should have let the ball go out of bounds. And Drake gets it. He was knocked away from Edmund. Then Edmund tried to save it. And as he threw it up the right sideline, it rolled out of bounds. Wow. 10 seconds are left. And now we'll have to foul. Ray brings in Dox and Hunter. They take out Snipes, who has four fouls. They want him to pick up a fifth now. Rivers will throw the inbounds pass. Ten seconds ago, Drake by That's one. He looks, he looks, he throws it. And a quick timeout was taken by Innovold before they fouled him. So Innovold makes a catch inbounds and took a timeout prior to the foul. Drake now has it in backcourt with seven seconds remaining and a one-point lead. Edmund, who has had that one-man fast break a time or two that has worked tonight, grabbed the errant shot, took it down to the free-throw line area, had it knocked away. He then raced into the right corner and grabbed it. And as he's falling out of bounds, he rolled it up the sideline, and it was out of bounds. Yeah, I, I thought the ball, I mean, it was nearly out of bounds. I don't even see how he got a hand on it. But had he let it go, it would have been WKU's ball under the basket. But he threw it back up the sideline and uh, went back out of bounds on the sideline directly across from the Hilltopper bench and directly to our right. 
Hilltopper ba basketball tonight brought to you by South Central Bank, home of the official debit card of WKU Athletics. And our final minute this evening brought to you by Minute Mark for everyone living life in the go. Drake rallied from 12 down in the first half. Hilltoppers led by as many as uh, nine in the second half a few times. He led by eight at the 10 minute mark. Kale Abrahamson, who had 22 at halftime, scored 17 in the second half to have 39. And now Rivers has the ball off to our right, and every single player is on the other side of the court. Interesting. All in backcourt. Rivers to the inbounds pass, nine seconds ago. Backward pass, and they quickly foul the best free throw shooter for Drake. So Reed Timmer got open. He hasn't missed a free throw the entire season. He's 16 for 16. Eight seconds are left. Ray will bring Nigel Snipes in. Timmer, the left-handed guard at the free throw line. And they don't have any Drake players uh, in the lane here except for Timmer, and he shoots two. That was a 10th team foul. Drake by one, eight seconds to go. And that free throw is short. So now the Hilltoppers are down by one against Drake. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> down by one against Drake. Needing to go the length of the court. Where's Brazelton and Rogers? Brazelton with the ball. <laughs> so Timmer misses that one. Just the second miss in 20 tries this evening for the team. And the first miss Timmer had all year long. Now the Hilltoppers, if he misses again, they need to block him out. There's nobody in the lane but Timmer. He'll shoot for a two-point Drake lead. Hilltoppers have two timeouts left, and he makes that one. So it's a two-point lead. Ray has two timeouts left. He'll take one here. He's already got the, the board over there. He's, he's working on a play. He's got something up his sleeve. Eight seconds to go. Got to go the length of the court. 79 to 81. Plenty of time. Flashback city right here. What was the time left on the clock in that one? 12 seconds? Uh, I don't recall. I think it was 12. All right. That's when uh, the inbounds pass was made in uh, backcourt. Hey, fans, this season, Midas of Bowling Green is giving away a trip to Louisville to support the Hilltoppers. Uh, it includes four tires, four tickets to the Louisville game, and a $50 gas card. But you must sign up prior to December 7th for a chance to win the trip and receive a discount on your oil change. That is Midas of Bowling Green. The first game today had Murray State holding on. Milwaukee hit a three-pointer just after the buzzer to lose it by three. The final was 69-66. Uh, U.S. Bank is also proud to be the exclusive bank cornerstone partner of WKU Athletics. All of us serving you at U.S. Bank. Snipes backward pass to McNeil. Drake with token pressure. Eight seconds to go in a game. Hilltoppers are down by two in overtime. Snipes to McNeil in backcourt. He comes up with a right-handed dribble across the timeline. Four seconds to go. Hands it off to Docks. Docks at the top of the key. Left side snipes. Three for the win. No good. Oh. It's off the iron, and Drake has won. It was a left-wing three. Snipes got a pretty good look at it. He's had a hot hand. It banged off the back of the iron, and Drake has rallied from eight down in the final ten minutes of regulation to win the game, 81-79. Boy, I thought he made it. It looked good. It was just a just skinned off the front rim then to the back and bounced out good look at it like you said just wouldn't go down for him the miracle couldn't happen twice so drake goes to two and two the hilltoppers fall to two and two and they'll play the winner or that should say the loser of either weber state or central michigan tomorrow our pregame show coverage will start at 1 p.m central tip time at 1 30. final score in overtime drake 81 wku 79. And our postgame show is up next. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network.